Right now, there's a whole lot of chit chat about Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, financial education, and a lot of YouTubers in the financial space. And it's pretty interesting. I am one of the only people on YouTube who assiduously says, hey, do not get involved in cryptocurrency. But a ton of people are saying, hey, um, you should get in cryptocurrency and they're promoting things that are a scam. Sam Bankman Freed was a billionaire for about 18 months. And there's another guy, CZ of Binance, who's worth like 16 billion. So this CZ guy is the only billionaire in the crypto space at the moment. It's very interesting. But let's let's roll this and let's see what this gentleman has to say about Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, Financial Education, and other YouTubers, Andre Jack. And other YouTubers who promoted the FTX scam. Right, not not good. A lot of people lost a lot of money. Now BlockFi is collapsing because BlockFi had an ex exposure to FTX, and now you're going to see on the financial X collapsed. Right, not not good. A lot of people lost a lot of money. Now BlockFi is collapsing because BlockFi had an ex exposure to FTX, and now you're going to see on the financial side of YouTube, all these financial big they're the big boys. Andre Jick, meet Kevin, Graham Stephan, maybe financial education Jeremy, who I have no idea how he has so many subs. They're just, I, I don't know how he has so many subs. Anyway, you're going to see all these people start apologizing, and I've seen a couple of them already. I regret to have taken on the sponsorship with FTX on the Millennial Money Podcast. I should have known better, and for that, I'm sorry. I'm going to remove all of my BlockFi links, and I will not include them. I'm going to continue to be transparent. Thank you for giving me the benefit of the doubt and for watching my videos, because without you, I would not be here. As some of you may have seen, FTX US has been a sponsor here on the channel for the majority of the year. FTX.com has recently faced liquidity issues, disabled withdrawals, and because of that, I'm worried about the potential impact to FTX US. Now, I really hope that I'm preemptively jumping the gun, that FTX US is fully backed as they say, that there's not gonna be any issue and everything will continue operating normally. I've always been completely transparent about everything I do here on the channel and everything involving personal finance, so I feel like I owe it to you you to explain the situation and what's going on, and I'm sorry. Everybody who watches the channel means the world to me, and I would not be here without you. I'm gonna continue to be transparent. I've always been completely transparent because without you, I would not be here. And I would not be here without you. Guess who doesn't have to apologize? This fucking guy, this guy right here. And that's a brag, because in 2021, BlockFi reached out to me and they said, hey, let's do a sponsorship, just like Andre Jick. They had a link to Andre Jick's video. We want you to do it just like Andre Jick and put safely in the title. And I was like, okay, I don't do a lot of sponsorships, okay? But I do talk to people to see if there's something worth sponsoring, if there's something worth, you know, sharing, if it has any value. So I, you know, I dug a little bit and we had a phone call. And when it got to the point where I asked them, how do you provide your clients with a greater than 8% return? on their crypto when they invest in your platform. They could not give me a straight answer. That's when I stopped talking to them because anybody who knows anything about fucking finance knows that with a higher return comes higher risk. And if you're getting an 8% return on your deposits, it's not even really an investment, it's just a deposit. How much is BlockFi making? You're getting a fraction of what BlockFi is making. So what they're doing is they're taking your money and they're loaning it out on super risky loans. So I don't have to apologize because I use my brain. You know who does have to apologize? The biggest financial YouTubers out there. And because they're the biggest, they've sucked the most clients into BlockFi who now can't withdraw their money. And now they're gonna be saying sorry. But guess what? Sorry doesn't really cut it because we're entering a, uh, a recession, likely. The stock market has taken a shitter. People's savings rates have gone down and credit card debt has gone up. So for the average Joe who trusted these financial gurus or whatever, based on their net worth, are now getting screwed over while these financial YouTubers are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money because YouTube pays the, probably the highest CPM, cost per mil, cost per thousand views um, that the advertisers pay than any other sector of YouTube.
So they're going to recover just fine, also considering the fact that sponsorships on the financial side, so those sponsorships pay ridiculous amounts of money. And I rarely do sponsorships because most of this shit is garbage. So for these these big YouTubers to see 8% and not have any red flags hit them in the face shows me that they don't understand even the basic concepts of finance and risk and how they're, they are putting their risk onto their followers. People look at financial YouTubers and they de- decide their credibility based on their net worth. They think their net worth was gained through something like real estate investing or trading or anything like that, when in reality, it, they got most of their money from YouTube. I mean, when Andre Chick started, he was his original channel wasn't even financial, and then it went to some weird magic financial combo, and it started as financial minimalism. I don't spend that much money at all. And now he like blows a million dollars on Pokemon cards. And then it was dividend investing. And then it went, wait, no, dividend investing doesn't make any sense because you're going to pay a bunch of taxes on it. Why are you paying a bunch of taxes on it? Because he's in the highest tax bracket probably possible because he's making so much money from YouTube and the sponsorships. So people see these people with lots of money and they think, well, they must have sort of, sort of credibility to them because they're so rich. They must be doing something right with their money. When in reality, the only thing they're doing right is posting videos to YouTube and using sponsorships. I just don't think that they actually care about you. I don't see it with Andre Jick. I don't see it with Meet Kevin. I kind of see it with Graham Stephan. And they're making millions of dollars off of you guys. And that's it. That's the end of the story. And then they invest it or whatever, and some of them do it better than others. I'm sure Graham Stephan has a pretty well-diversified portfolio because he's an intelligent guy. Me, Kevin is uh, doing all in on house hack, taking forty million or more now, way more than that now, and putting into house hack where there is no guaranteed IPO within ten years. And even if they do IPO in ten years, you might not actually have a return on your money. He's doing a startup, one man startup with forty plus million dollars. It's fucking insane. And then you have Andre Jick who just mixes magic with finance. And his version of finance is buying Pokemon cards, a shitload of crypto at the top, and dividend investing. That's what it used to be. And then eventually you switch from dividend investing. And so people are like following him around like, okay, wait, Pokemon cards, wait, crypto. Most of crypto is more so gambling than it is investing. So wait, dividend investing, wait, not dividend investing, wait, financial minimalism, wait, not financial minimalism, because he's not, he's not a financial minimalist when he's buying like a million dollars worth of Pokemon cards or whatever the fuck. Who the fuck are these people? Are they even worth listening to? Am I worth listening to? The only reason I'm worth listening to is because I'm the only person who talks like a normal fucking human being when they're talking to a camera. I don't just open up a fucking Google Chrome tab and find the, a bunch of article titles that I can put in my video so they pop up with the article title and don't even delve into the articles. And that's a roast on Andre Jick. And the bloat face isn't funny. And Meet Kevin didn't talk about his DUI. Why didn't he talk about his DUI like a man? Address it. Say we make mistakes. Human beings make mistakes. And some people be mad and leave. They already did. You're dishonesty because you were shit-faced in that DUI video. Whenever there's a lot of money to be had, it just corrupts people. It corrupts them. And the fact that when pe- they all saw 8% return, nobody had a red flag. Nobody. Behemoths of finance couldn't see that. And they fucked you. They fucked you over. And now they're going to start apologizing. Anyway, I'm so sorry, but guess what? You're fucked. They're not. Because they can make the money back in a single fucking day. They have millions of dollars. And they get paid tons of money on YouTube. They get tons of money in sponsorships. Yeah, it just makes me pissed off. Nobody's perfect. People make mistakes. They make mistakes. I, I wish the people on fi- the fin- finance side of YouTube would just tone it down a fucking bit and just be real. That's what I wish. We've made videos about this before, how weird it is. It's like, wait a minute, where are you getting that money from? Why are you paying 5 to 7% for, for my cash? And obviously they're lending it out. But the problem is when people sign up for this, it's not entirely clear that their money is being lent out. It's surprising to me that it's taken them nine months to talk about this. But state regulators say some interest-bearing accounts linked uh, or with billions of dollars in deposits appear to be unregistered securities that aren't disclosing their risks to investors. The warnings come out of states uh, like New Jersey, Alabama, and Kentucky, which are among the states which have brought actions against BlockFi and its affiliates. Which, by the way, if you want to sign up for BlockFi, make sure to go to metkevin.com slash BF. BlockFi. <laughs> you should vet who you're putting your money with. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Putting your cryptocurrency somewhere where you get, it's going to get an 8% APY or whatever, does that not, not, does that not sound too good to be true? When you can't get a high-yield savings account that's above 0.05% or whatever, 
in a 0% interest rate environment. Does that sound too good to be true? It probably is. So here's the big takeaway from everything that's happened. Don't listen to financial YouTubers all the time. Vet their information. You are also responsible for vetting your own decisions. Just because some guy with a lot of money, because they get paid a ton of money on YouTube, says deposit money with BlockFi, doesn't mean BlockFi is safe. But at the same time, it says literally in his video title, the safest way to invest in BlockFi or whatever. So I guess, I guess maybe the blame is mostly on them. I've just become so disenchanted with the money hungriness of financial YouTubers and their inability to communicate like normal human beings. Why do they talk so fucking weird? Why do you guys watch them? Don't trust everything a financial YouTuber says because they're just people. They're not, they're not some bigger than life person. They're just people who've made a ton of money on YouTube. That's it. Where's the sponsorships? Any sponsorships? Actually, yeah, you can grab some free Weeble stocks in the description below and, uh, it makes me money. Also, deposit your cryptocurrency with BlockFi and you can get up to 200 And I try to make a very clear point that I've always felt a little dumb. Okay. He just said what I have been saying for years. That Andre Jack wants that whole flip-flop with the dividend investing. Graham Stephan did not get his money from real estate. He got his money from YouTube. Meet Kevin got his money from YouTube, not real estate. And I've been saying this, and maybe you'll listen to someone else who's saying the same things that I have been saying for years. Let's go ahead and uh, check out another white YouTuber addressing this. Richard, you're watching The Plain Bagel. I want to put out a quick unscripted and no frills video to talk about the whole FTX situation because you might have noticed that this past week it's not been very good for cryptocurrency investors. We've seen a lot of volatility in the space even with Bitcoin, Ether, and Tether, a stable coin which briefly unpegged from the US dollar. And it all seems to be tied to one institution which is FTX which if you aren't familiar is the world's second largest crypto exchange that as of this morning filed for bankruptcy protection. Now this is a situation that's still unfolding and one that's already been covered by a few others including CopyZilla who I highly recommend you check out his video. He does a really good job explaining how we got to this point uh, but at risk of being redundant I do want to cover the basics as I've had a lot of viewers asking me about the FTX situation and why it's causing all this volatility but then I also want to talk about something that we've seen result because of this uh, that I think is worth addressing. But why are we here today? Well, it has a lot to do with this guy right here, Sam Bankman Fried, or SBF as a lot of people call him, who is the founder of FTX and oftentimes viewed as the golden boy of cryptocurrency. He is someone who is very much an advocate for the space. He's often seen as being altruistic, as someone who only cares about the long-term success of cryptocurrency as a whole. And he's worked with lawmakers, he's been very active politically. And so a lot of people like him in the space. But on November 2nd, Coindesk released an article whereby they highlighted that they had seen the private balance sheet of Alameda Research. Now, Alameda Research is another company founded by SBF. And while the two were supposed to be separate entities who obviously aren't supposed to intermingle, the article sort of highlighted that that might not be the case. The article highlighted that of Alameda's $14.6 billion in assets, roughly 40% were FTT tokens which is the token that's issued by the FTX exchange. In addition to a lot of these cryptocurrency assets being either locked up or otherwise hard to sell, it was found that the company also had $7.4 billion of loans, of money that it owed to lenders. And the article sort of raised two main concerns. The first being that the company wouldn't be able to meet the obligations because of the locked in nature of some of the assets and the fact that some of the cryptocurrencies held might not be worth as much as they were otherwise indicated. And the second concern or rumor was that Alameda Research was borrowing customer assets from FTX and using that to trade and posting FTT as collateral for those assets. In other words, Alameda Research was taking customer assets and replacing them with the token that the exchange can make an infinite number of, which made a lot of people very concerned. It led to a lot of people selling their FTT token, which caused the price to drop dramatically, roughly 90% from the beginning of the month, which is bad news for Alameda since that was a key holding of theirs. And it also led to a lot of people trying to withdraw their money from the exchange, with $6 billion allegedly being withdrawn over a 72-hour period 
before on November 8th, the exchange halted withdrawals, effectively freezing clients' money. And while withdrawals did partially resume, this morning, FTX and Alameda both filed for bankruptcy protection, which really puts into question whether people will ever get their money back. The whole situation has been very surprising because again, a lot of people trusted SBF as a figure but also FTX was seen as one of the few stable operations in the crypto space in the face of companies like Voyager and Celsius. And we're starting to learn that a lot of institutional investors had money in FTX and will likely suffer as a result of all this, including the Ontario's teacher's pension. Because nothing says responsible retirement investment like a company run by someone who played League of Legends during investor meetings and accidentally described crypto as a Ponzi scheme. But the situation is being felt across the cryptoverse and causing a sell-off of Bitcoin and other assets because it's largely seen as having shaken the faith of institutional investors who had dipped their toe in with a company that they thought they could trust. And because of FTX's size and importance in the industry, it could lead to a cascade of other liquidations, of deleveraging, and other failures in the crypto space from crypto companies. So that's the situation at a high level. There are a few other details worth mentioning. For one, even though there's FTX, the international exchange that's having this liquidity problem, there is also a company called FTX US, which only operates in the United States. And SPF has reassured people that the funds are totally 100% backed and that people have full access to their funds. But that appears to be a lie because FTX US filed for bankruptcy protection alongside FTX this morning, meaning that all the platforms appear to be in trouble. And the second detail worth highlighting is that there was this weird thing around Binance, the number one crypto exchange, uh, possibly playing a role in the downfall of FTX by helping to spread rumors, and then stepping in to claim that they would help take over the institution and bail it out, and then walking away from that deal. So obviously, uh, some drama going on there. Again, I highly recommend CoffeeZilla's video for more information on that. But with us now generally up to speed on the situation, it brings me to the point that I really wanted to touch on with this video, which is how FTX was promoted. Because outside these celebrity endorsements, you might be aware that FTX was a massive sponsor in the YouTube finance space. Pretty much every big finance creator at some point had an FTX affiliate link, or a direct sponsored message. But with all the stuff unfolding, we've seen creators come out and start responding to the situation, with the biggest one that I've seen being from Graham Stephan, who outside of apologizing for this happening, also encouraged viewers to withdraw their money from FTX US while they could. And I've already talked about this in a past video, and I'm not gonna berate creators who promoted FTX US and are now taking responsibility and acknowledging that it might have been a bad idea. But I do think that it's a cautionary tale of why crypto companies and centralized institutions in this space are still generally not really worth working with. There are just not enough consumer protections around cryptocurrency services compared to traditional banks and exchanges and institutions, which at the very least have minimum capital requirements, minimum liquidity requirements, and reporting requirements. A lot of crypto is still in regulatory limbo. They're not treated the same as securities. And even though FTX US highlights that it's a regulated US exchange on its website, it discloses elsewhere that they are not registered with the SEC, which is how regular exchanges have to be regulated. When you actually look at how it's regulated, at the federal level, it has mostly to do with anti-money laundering laws. And at the state level, it's registered as a money transmitter, meaning that it doesn't face much more regulation than TurboTax. If these companies end up going bankrupt, it tends to not be very good for the people with deposits with them. Because again, there are not the same safety nets in terms of insurance and other institutions aimed at pooling money together to protect people that you have in traditional finance. But there's also the fact that with the bankruptcy procedure, a lot of these companies don't end up having the assets that they promised they had. And keep in mind, we had an entire financial crisis because traditional financial institutions that were heavily regulated we're trading excessively and leveraging excessively around a stable asset of real estate. So obviously we're going to have problems when unregulated crypto exchanges try to do the same thing. So hopefully it's a learned lesson. You know, we've had this type of problem happen before. Now it's happened with one of the most stable institutions in the space. It should be enough to convince people that maybe crypto services just aren't it yet. You know, maybe we shouldn't be promoting this through the influencer channel because there are so many risks that aren't being disclosed to viewers when they have this mention or this affiliate link. And if you really do care about the financial security of the people who look up to you, of your viewers, then you really should take this stuff seriously. I really do think there should be more emphasis on the risks that people face. If it's gonna be involving with crypto, there's a lot more to discuss about the risks and the lack of safety nets that exist there. Anyway, that's the situation, a few takeaways, and hopefully this whole situation simmers a little bit 
obviously the best case scenario is that clients are able to take their money out before we have these companies really shut down. And I'm not sure what the current situation around withdrawals is given the bankruptcy announcement, but if you find that you are able to withdraw your funds from the FTX platforms, it might be worth doing so before things change again. Be safe out there. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I have had some of you who have pushed back because of the things I have said about Graham Stephan. It's like, oh, he's more successful than you. And, you know, you know, business. Um, here's the thing. I want you to look at these white YouTubers who have been literally saying the same thing that I have said. And, you know, once again, I have been really, really sounding the alarm and saying, don't invest in crypto if you're the average American. If you're the average person making thirty to fifty thousand dollars a year, um, you really don't have the money to be dicking around with crypto. And when it goes bad, as we have seen, crypto goes bad. You're in a situation where you can lose money that you can ill afford to lose. Now, we've seen this playbook over and over and over, investing in crypto scams, crypto schemes, and literally the whole space. I had someone push back on me saying, well, the honest people of crypto, uh, if I, had, I put 100 crypto people in the room, one might be honest, one. If I put 1,000 people in a room, I might get five honest crypto people. The, 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 the whole segment is full of scams, is full of pump and dumps, yet there are people who continue to put their money into it because they feel that they're going to get rich overnight with little to no effort. That is the driving sentiment of investing in crypto. It is, you know, I, I get people it's like, well, you know, I'm into it for the long term. You're one of the rare people who's into it for the long term. The reason that people are investing in cryptocurrency is that there's a thought, there is a sentiment that they can get rich overnight. Case in point, Carl Renfield. Five years ago, dude was a cashier. Now he claims to be a billionaire. That narrative out in the internet space is dangerous. Well, if Carl could be a cashier five years ago and he's a billionaire now i could become a millionaire in a few months that's the thought process this is how these people think and once again this ain't going to be the last time you're going to see some stuff like this it's not it's just not but once again i have been saying the same thing about these financial youtubers that many of them are into it for money. Many of them are into it because here's the thing. If you notice, I don't really sponsor no one on my channels. There's a reason because most of the stuff I get in my inbox is complete and the other junk. It doesn't help you. It's not a good offer. And it's some of it's scam. Some of it is outright scams. And a lot of it's just not that good. If I sponsor someone, it's going to be a product that I use and know very well. So go ahead, check out this video and look at the carnage that is happening because a lot of people got hurt by this. A lot of people because their money is locked up into this exchange and they're going to lose their money. It's just a simple fact. They're going to lose their money.